Hi guys, welcome to Carl Portwood Craft. I'm Carl. In today's video, we're going to be making some storage crates for boots and shoes, what you can keep in the hallway and keep all that messy mud from going all over your nice carpets. So for the project, we're going to be using pallet wood and we're going to turn this horrible pallet wood into to this. Some nice steady shoe crates to keep all your dirty wellies and boots in. And you can personalise them as well, which looks pretty cool. We're going to show you in detail how we do this routing today. In order to get a nice straight edge on one side of the pieces of pallet wood, we need to use this jointing jig. Now, if you've got a jointer or a bench top planer, you could run them across the top of there. But with pallet wood, I don't like to do that because they're a bit rough and you don't know if there's going to be any bits of metal in there or anything like that, which is going to wreck your blades or little stones. So I like to put them through the table saw because that's more robust. Uh, what we do is we put the piece of pallet wood onto the jointing jig and clamp it down. If you've not seen one of these before, I've got a video and I'll put that in the link below. We run these through the table saw on the straight edge of the jig runs up against the table saw fence and then we can take them out of the jig and then we just run that nice new clean edge against the table saw fence and we've got perfectly square boards on two sides then. As you can see then guys, we've sorted all the timber out into size order. We've got the smaller pieces here and then the larger pieces here. And we've got the nice fresh edge facing us on this side. That side is now gonna be run against the table saw fence, which is gonna clean up the opposite side. That's all the pallet wood now then guys, sanded down to 60 grit and it comes up pretty decent actually and it's a rustic project anyway so we don't need any more than that when we apply the wax on it it will go lovely and smooth. Just one quick thing, we put a couple of dust sheets down on top of the workbench and that does a couple of things, it helps reduce the vibration from the sanders so it's good for your tendons and whatever and your tendonitis and all that lot and also a lot of the dust, what doesn't get caught by Henry, settles onto these and then we can shake them outside and it just prevents a load of dust in the workshop. Next thing I need to do is put a square edge on all these boards and then we can cut them down to the final dimensions which are 500 by 500. I've got to take into account the thickness of this material so we're going to have we're going to have half the boards at 500 mil and then we're going to have the second half at 470 and then the box will be perfectly square then. Next thing we've got to do is cut these corner brackets. This is one that Jacob's making at the minute and they're about 340 mil, so I'll just use a stop lock, chop a few of them, and then we can start assembling. Assembly time now then. We've got the four corner posts. We've got six pieces of pallet wood at 470 mil and we've got six pieces of pallet wood at 500 mil so when we put the box together it should be 500 by 500 ish we've got two little pieces of the off cuts here which we're going to use on the bottom to place the runners across which are going to be the base of the uh, crate first pieces i attach are the 470 mil and we just use glue and brad nails Make sure everything's nice and flush and square, make your life easier as you go along. Then we use one of the other pieces of pallet wood as a spacer and you can work your way down then.
This off cut here off the pallet is just going to be the little ledge what the bottom of the crate is going to sit on. And we'll just cut that to size. You should use a tenon saw and a bench hook. Then your overlap here is your feet of your crate, so it's going to sit like that. So this little ledge needs to sit on that side. Just pop some glue on it. Attach it flush with the bottom piece of pallet wood. Just going to need to change my flat nails. These are too big. That's the two short sides done at 470. So all we need to do now is put the 500 mil pieces on and they just connect like so and we'll work our way down again. Like that, glue brads, done. That's the main crate put together now. All we need to do is add the base and I just take a referential measurement straight from the top, cut these to size and just glue and brad them on the bottom. The other crate had five pa panels in the bottom, this one only needs four and that's just because these pieces are slightly bigger and just space them evenly and then just glue and brad them in. Right, what we're going to do next is we're going to personalise these box for the kids who are going to be using them and they're going to be putting the shoes in here. So we're going to put these bits of pallet wood on an angle like this and we're going to have the names in here and on this one it's going to say shoes. So I'm going to show you how I write the word shoes on here with the router. So what we need first is some stencils. Sometimes people print these off the silhouettes on the printer and then put them on and follow, follow the lines of the uh, printed image but we prefer to use the stencils because we can see the lines when using the paper sometimes it gets a little bit scruffy on the edges and it's really difficult to see we do use that method when we're doing a larger picture say like when I did the R2D2 on the bed what I did recently because you can't get a template obviously of that and then we just refine it afterwards so we're going to use the template first I'm going to use a combination square to get a straight line to put the letters on I'm going to use some carpet tape to secure my material to the bench. I've got a brush so every time I stop I can clear the waste so I can see what I'm doing. To remove the material we use these straight bits. You could splash out on some up spiral bits which would make it easier to clear the waste. But these, are, these suffice for us and the good little bits. I've got probably I think that's about a 12 and a 6 there. So basically whatever size you need to remove the material. We use a bigger one to remove the bulk of the waste and then a smaller one. And I've got my Makita palm router. I'm also going to pop this piece next to it just to give me some support on the router base. So now when I put the router on there, it's got something to lean on to. Use the combination square to draw a straight line. Put the bottom of the letter onto that line so you can just see it. Trace them out. And then for your subsequent letters, measure five millimeters away from the previous one. Square that line off. Place your template back on so it's just touching that line what you've just drawn and the bottom line and trace it out again. And then just continue that all the way across until you've done the word. I'll do that and then I'll show you what we do next. 
So now we're going to start the process of rounding it out and I've decided just to use this small flute bit first. We're not actually even going to go to that bigger one because these letters are quite small. Another accessory that we use sometimes is this guide and this is from Clearview and this just mounts to the bottom of the plunge Oh, sorry, onto the palm router and it makes it easier to move around. But when we're doing little small projects like this, I like to be closer in. So this is great when we're doing larger images, but we're not going to be using that today. I'll be using the brush a lot and I'll have my ear defenders on and my mask. I've also got this little light here that helps light up the area. Some of these palm, writers, palm routers do actually come with little lights inside. I know the, uh, the Ryobi one does and you can actually get a uh, katsu set where you can put little lights in there as well but we just use this little work light here so I'll, I'll start routing then some of the key things to look at is just being really careful and sneaking up to the lines taking out most of the bulk and then you can go back and neaten them areas up afterwards uh, by going in closer to the lines and then with bits of sandpaper or maybe even a chisel if needed Oh, that's the bulk of the material removed, guys. Oh, oh. That's the bulk of the material removed now, guys. Uh, I will say one thing. Try and relax your hand when you're doing it. Try and use both hands. Try and relax them, but while keeping a firm grip. If you feel your hand starting to get tight or cramping up, just switch it off, put it down, give it a few seconds, stretch it off, brush it off, you know, and then start again. As soon as you feel your hand cramping up, if you still try and push on, the router will take control and you'll mess it up. So if you have a closer look at this now, we've got some... So we've got some fluffy bits here and that, but don't worry about them at all because we're going to sneak up on there on the lines now with the router, remove the last little bits of material just close to the lines. We're not after perfection. It's hand done after all and it's going to look good. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll give it a sand and then you'll see the finished product. There you go then guys, all done. Looks lovely. Uh, the human CNC machine, Jacob, has just done that one. And uh, I'm just going to put a little rounded portion on the end of each one. Just to give it a little bit more of a neater look. And this Canon WD-40 is the perfect size for that. the finish we're just going to apply this fiddies antique brown i think it's called yeah uh on here and that'll look nice contrast to the dark oak what we've applied so i'll just put this on buff it off and then we'll attach them and then we're just going to pop it on with some brads and then we'll screw it on from behind as well just to make sure it's secure do you want to show that jerk how oh, that looks so i think the contrast of this other wax looks pretty good actually as well that you do it. Yeah. Right then guys, that's it done. I'm really happy with them. They've turned out really nice for the customer. Hopefully she'll love them. We've got one personalized for the kiddies and one unpersonalized for the adults. So if you've enjoyed that, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. I always answer all the comments. If you would like to see your name in the credits below, you can support the channel through Patreon or through the channel join membership thing, what uh, YouTube's brought out now, uh, and you'll get early access, early access to some videos, you'll get your name in the credits, you'll get the Patreon membership channel only video every Saturday, and then periodically I release other videos as well of interest. And I'll see you on next week's video, which is going to be your decision, by the way. So you can go over to the community side of YouTube, which most of you already know about. And you can look down there in the feed and you'll see the voting section. And you can vote for either a cat house, a mirror, 
a set of nester tables or a toy box. So get over there guys, get voting and I'll see you next week. Bye.